So this is video number three for chapter five and we cover proportions in this one. It goes along with actually section 5.2. So we kind of had two parts or two videos that go with the first section. This is section two. And in this one, we're gonna be able to determine if two ratios form a proportion. So we'll start with some vocab, two vocab words. A proportion is an equation stating that two ratios are equivalent. So when you have one ratio equal to another ratio, that makes a proportion. So this is a proportion. A lot of times it will look like a fraction equal to another fraction, okay? But remember, we can also write ratios as like two to four, and that could be equal to three to six or something like that. So when we say something is proportional, that means the two quantities that form the proportion, the two ratios are equal. So if the two ratios are equal, then they form a proportion and they are proportional. So this is a proportional relationship because 3 ninths is equal to 12 36. If I simplify them both, well, we're going to go through all the strategies, but because those are actually equal in value, then they're proportional. So here are the five strategies. Make a list on your paper. There's room for you to write these down just so you can look in one spot and see all the different strategies we could use. Okay, so the first one is to simplify them both and check and see if they're equal. Second one is to check cross products and see if those cross products are equal. Third one is to um, divide both ratios and get decimals. Maybe if you have a calculator, this could be an easy way to do it and check to see if those decimals are equal. We can mentally check, so looking at it just to see if we can tell by looking at the numbers. We'll do some examples of that. So seeing if one of them is more than one or less than one or more than a half and less than a half. You might be able to tell just by looking, yes or no, they're equal or not. And then mentally scale it up or down. So mentally, or you could, um, usually if it's easy to do in your head, we'll do it this way, but you could also use a calculator. Scale it up or down to see if they match. And we'll talk about how to use arrows for that. Okay, so you've got these written down. Let's go through each one. I might write this on my paper by this list. Um, when you're checking to see if something is proportional, if two ratios are proportional, it's just like checking to see if two fractions are equivalent to each other, right? Fractions and ratios, oftentimes we write them just the same way. So first method, simplify them both. If I have two ratios and I wanna see if they form a proportion, simplify them. So let's see, this would simplify to what, six over four, I could divide them both by two, and I would get three over two. And then simplify this one, I could divide them both by four, and I would get two over three. And then I check, are those equal to each other or not? Uh, no, this is an improper fraction. This is, so more than one. And this one is less than one, they're not equal. So when I simplify them both, I can tell that they are not proportional. So you try these, simplify both of them, see if they simplify to the same thing. If they do, your answer is yes, they're proportional. If they don't, your answer is no, they're not. So pause, try these, simplify them both, and then we'll check. So in number one, I simplified them both, they both gave me one third, so my answer is yes, those form a proportion, or they are proportional. And number two, I got two different things, so my answer is no, these are not proportional, or they don't form a proportion. So this one is also on your paper to try. They might give you X and Y values like this in a table. Um, usually, and we'll talk a whole lot about this more as we go through chapter five, but usually we're gonna check and see if the ratio Y over X, Y on top of X, we'll check that for each of these rows in my table and see if they're all equivalent, see if they all simplify to the same thing. So the first row, if I do Y over X, would be three over one half. Well, to simplify that, I don't want this fraction in the bottom. So I could get rid of the half part if I multiplied it by two. And I gotta do the same thing on the top to keep it equivalent. That would give me, what, six on the top and one on the bottom. So I get the ratio six to one. Okay, let's see if the rest of them all simplify to that same thing. Well, doing this one, the second one, uh, yeah, I just get six over one, just with the numbers the way they are, cool. So that one also works. I gotta check them all to make sure that the whole table is proportional. So let's try this one. If I do y over x, I get this, or three over two on the bottom. 
So again, I don't like that fraction being down here, so I'm going to multiply it by 2 to get rid of the fraction. Whatever I do to the bottom, i got to do the top to keep it equal. So 9 times 2, and then these 2s just cancel out. So I get 3 there. And then if I just do 18 divided by 3, that would be 6 over 1, or 6. Good, so that one matches. Got one more to check. Got to check that bottom row. So that is 12 over 2, and if I simplify that, I'd get 6 over 1. So I would say yes, the relationship here between x and y is proportional. Because I tested all of them, and they all gave me the same ratio or the same fraction when I simplified them. Okay, so method two is to set up and check cross products. Well, you want to write down what a cross product is first. Cross product is when you multiply the numbers that are diagonal to each other, right? Diagonal means like kitty corner to each other um, in a proportion. So here's my example, two fourths and three sixths. If I multiply these together, so I did that right here and I got 12, and then I multiply these together, the ones that are diagonal, did that, and I got 12. If you come up with the same answer for both of them, then your answer is yes, they are proportional. So take a minute to copy that example down on your paper where you are writing uh, method two. So let me show you how you, we might do that in a word problem. So you swim your first four laps in 2.4 minutes. So I'm going to write four laps. 2.4 minutes, work this out with me, and then I want to see if that's proportional with 16 laps in 12 minutes. So, since this is method 2, we're going to try the cross products and see. So I'm going to multiply the 4 and the 12, those are diagonal from each other, gives me 48. Then I'm going to multiply 2.4 and the 16, because those are diagonal to each other. Okay, so I did that on my calculator right here and got 38.4. Since these two numbers are not the same, then my answer is no, it's not a proportional relationship, or um, they don't form a proportion. So my cross product's not equal, then the answer is no, not proportional. Okay, so one thing that you might notice, let me show you both at the same time. When I look back, what's really important is that my labels match up. Um, right here, I have laps on the top and then minutes on the bottom. You have to line your labels up. So, you need to write this down. There's a place for you to write that your labels must be lined up either horizontally, so going this way, or vertically, going this way. I'll show you what I mean. It says, in a proportion, units or the labels must line up horizontally or vertically. So let's say I was looking at an example with the cost of some tickets. So I can either have cost on top of tickets, and this has to match, cost on top of tickets. So I've lined them up so that these match and these match. That would be lined up horizontally. Or I could say, well, hey, here's the cost for person A and how many tickets person A got. And then the cost for person B and how many tickets person B got. And now I have them lined up this way, cost and cost, and then tickets and tickets. So you can line it up that way too. Both of those would work. But this won't work. I can't have cost here and then the other cost here. And then tickets on the bottom here and then tickets on the top here. They can't go this way. Not going to work. So anytime you do a story problem and set up your own proportion, Make sure the labels either line up horizontally, this way, or vertically, this way. So I'll do one more and then let you try. You can do 40 push-ups in two minutes. I could set it up this way, 40 push-ups in two minutes, and see if that's equal to your friend who can do 57 push-ups in three minutes. I could test that. <clears throat> or I could set it up this way, 40 push-ups, for you, and you do that in two minutes, and your friend is 57 push-ups in three minutes, where I have the labels going together this way, right? Either push-ups both on top, minutes both on the bottom, or push-up, push-up, and then minute, minute. 
check these cross products. I'll let you do it real quick and see if they're proportional. Either way I do it, I get cross products that are not equal, so my answer is no, not proportional. So you've got two here. I'll let you set them up and then check your cross products to see if they're proportional. So pause and then we'll check. Okay, so in the first one I wanted to show you both ways you could set it up. Most people will probably do it this way with laps over minutes. But either way, you could have done laps, laps, minutes, minutes. That'll work too. Check your cross products. They are equal, so it is proportional. And then the second one, uh, most people will probably do pages per minute. And if I check the cross products, again, they are proportional. Okay, method three, divide them both. <clears throat> so if I divide both of my numbers, if I have a calculator, it's probably pretty handy to do it this way. Divide them both and see what I get as a decimal and see if the decimals are equal. So I'll do the first one, then you practice the next two. So when I do 14 divided by 17, I get 0.8235. And then 42 divided by 51, point, it is the exact same thing on my calculator. So yes. If the decimals are identical, then your answer is yep, they're proportional. You try this one and this one. Pause. So you can see the decimals that I got here, they are not equal, so not proportional. And again, if the decimals are not equal, not proportional. Method four, mentally estimate them both. So um, I, I like to compare them to a half, right? This one is obviously less than a half. 15 out of 30 would be a half, so this is less than a half. And this one is more than one half. If you can look at it and tell that one of them is smaller than a half and one of them is bigger than a half, then you know they're not equal. Same thing here. This is less than half. That one's a lot more than half. Or you can just simply look at the numbers. They're not equal to each other. So no. All right, try the next two. Okay, again, this one is exactly one half. And so is this one, exactly one half. If they are equal, yes, they're proportional. They form a proportion. Or this one, this one is way less than a half. This one is more than a half. Not going to be equal to each other. Sometimes you'll have something like this. I think we had this in the first example too. You can just look at these and tell more than one whole, less than one whole. Not proportional, not equal. Okay, this is a fun method. Um, I wanted to show you how we could do it um, using kind of arrows, scaling it up and scaling it down. For this first one, change this to a six for me, so it says 60. Um, all right, so if you look at these, I can tell just by looking at it that that number got multiplied by two. So I need to check this. Did that exactly get multiplied by 2? Uh, no. This would have to be 28 if that was going to be true. So I know right now, not equal. Or here, for example, I could even divide. This got divided by 2, and so did this. If they match, if those arrows match and the same thing happened on the top as it did on the bottom, then you say, yes, those are going to be equal. They're equal fractions. Or here, that got multiplied by 10. That got multiplied by 10. So yes, they're equivalent. Um, what about here? This got divided by two. Did this get divided by two? No. If they don't match, if the arrows aren't the same for the numerators and the denominators, your answer is no, not proportional. So you have five different strategies. You can pick which strategy you want to use. Different strategies work better for different types of problems. Um, there's five questions here for you to do. Pick whatever strategy you want to use. You might have a favorite. You might do one of each type. And then uh, we'll come back and check. So try these five. So you might have done it all different ways. Um, so I don't have all the work on here, but you need to show your work for each one. So don't, when I come around and check your notes, make sure you have more than just yes or no. How did you get that answer? Okay, maybe you simplified. Maybe you did decimals. Maybe you um, did cross products. But show me somehow of what you know if it's yes or no proportional and then make sure down here with the chart do y over x when you're checking them and you need to check each one so you should have the work here to say yep i checked all four and they are all proportional together all of them okay so that's the end of video three we should be ready to um, go on and do our practice from section 5.2